Alright guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're not working on a Corvette, but we're kind of because it's a big block Chevrolet. So this is a uh, 454 that I ended up trading for. It was a pair of seats that I had for a year and ended up trading for this engine. And of course, all engines that run are worth more than engines that don't. So today we're going to try to see if we can get this big block Chevy to run. So this is exactly how I got it. I don't know why somebody went crazy with Ford Blue, but there's a couple things we need to do before we get this engine to run. <clears throat> Supposedly it came out of an RV, it has low miles, but you know how that is. Everybody says the same thing. So um, I think I have all the parts already here to make it run, so I shouldn't have to spend too much money. I did spend money on, this is an oil pan gasket, because the oil pan I noticed was loose when I got it. Uh, I didn't end up dropping it. I felt all the rod bearings, they felt okay. Again, one step at a time. So what I'm thinking we're gonna do is we're gonna do oil pan, gasket, check out the oil pump. And then from there we can put on a starter, which I have. We can put in a distributor, which I have. We can put on a carburetor, which I have. And then also valve cover gaskets. Um, the good thing about this engine is that it is fairly clean inside. I don't see anything obvious, major catastrophe type thing. But what I want to do is I want to get it running on this little stand that I have. Um, maybe hook up some mufflers to it and see if we can't make it work that way. Um, again, engines that run are worth more than engines that don't. So the biggest thing is we're going to have to figure out this. This is some kind of oil filter adapter thing. I don't know. And we're going to have to see if we can't get a spin-on filter to fit in there. But I, I even think I have oil for it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lift it up in the air with the engine hoist. The only reason is I can't get the oil pan out with the uh, flywheel on the back of the engine. And we're going to place that gasket, check everything on the bottom end, see what it looks like, and go from there. All right, oil pan is off. Interesting thing is the drain plug's right at the bottom, which I'm not used to. And that makes me think, yeah, maybe it did come off of an RV. But here's the pump and the pickup. The underside looks good. I don't see any like crazy discoloration. Um, I, there's nothing, you know, obviously loose on any of the rod bearings. You can move them back and forth a little bit. That's normal, but it's the up and down that you want to be worried about. I don't feel like there's anything spun. But the oil pickup's clean. So, hey, I've been looking for that socket. <laughs> anyway, we're going to scrape some gasket surfaces and then I have a gasket for it and we're going to put this oil pan back on. All right, oil pan is on, cleaned out, new gasket. I'll tell you what, it's a challenge to put on these four piece oil pan gaskets with this uh, cradle still in, but it's very similar to doing it on the engine. So next is we've got to figure out the oil filter issue and then I have a starter and we're going to go find us a distributor. All right, in the parts bin, look at that, two, two uh, starter bolts ready to go. For a distributor, we're going to go with an HEI. I wonder if we have any of these that are good and ready to go. Obviously, that one is bad. Let's see. The tack drive, we don't want that. Um, let's see. Got three wires and nothing else. We're gonna try maybe that one. We have to put some weights and springs. Oh, maybe we'll try this one. Oh, that's one of those computer controlled ones. We don't want that. Or this one. Let's see, we got a, I'm assuming all the weights are inside there. We have ignition module, we have a rotor, we have a vacuum advance. And we have a good gear. Now hopefully that will sit in there. It should. Um, and we can pick a distributor cap. Looks good enough. Yep, we'll grab that one. So this big block was out of a larger truck that had oil cooler lines. So this is like an adapter. So this end goes into the block and then you put the oil filter here on the bottom. Um, it's not the normal stuff I'm used to like on a Corvette. So one thing we're going to have to do in order to use this is we're going to have to remove these fittings. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug them uh, with some plugs like this. 
they'll go straight in there and then hopefully they won't leak. The challenge is going to be I need to get a new gasket for this. So we'll see how that happens. Alright, oil filter is on, adapter is in place. I found an o-ring from a transmission to put in there. We'll see how that holds but it's just an o-ring guys, it'll work. Uh, used but good oil filter which will be changed if this engine turns out to be in good shape and then of course the rotality so we don't have a distributor in yet so the oil pumps really not going to run but I'm going to hook up this starter and what I want to do is I want to get the engine to compression stroke so in the if this was in the car number one cylinder is over here here's my uh, I actually made these to do just this so I have my battery cables hooked up to the starter and this one hooked up to the block and here's to the solenoid so we should when I touch this to the battery we should have rotation and I put some uh, PB blaster in all the cylinders so we should get sprayed in the face with PB blaster let's see what happens I feel all kinds of compression coming out of this engine. All kinds. So the motor is spun over. Uh, I had my thumb in this porthole. Oops. Porthole? I had my thumb in the uh, spark plug hole and when it blew out I stopped the engine from turning and so the uh, mark on the balancer was coming up this way and then I just rotated it to about between 8 and 10 degrees before top dead center. That's a pretty good starting point. Um, just to get it running. So now what we can do is we can drop in the distributor, we can put in spark plugs, and then from there, well, maybe we won't put in spark plugs there. I'm gonna prime it and see if I can't get oil coming out of all the rocker arms. All right, engine is at top dead center. Well, 10 degrees before top dead center, number one. Compression stroke, we're lined up on the distributor base. Distributor base is locked down. That's gonna be our number one. Uh, post on the cap. So we will put this all back in. And look at that. It even lines up fairly straight. I like that. Then we'll do uh, oil. We'll prime it. Then plugs and wires. And then a carburetor, I guess. Do you know why you keep every fitting that you have ever gotten in a bucket like this? So you can make some janky stuff like this. <laughs> so Anyway, I have an oil pressure gauge here which I will be using uh, when we prime the engine, make sure we get oil pressure. I put five quarts in it and this is hooked up. We have oil filter full of oil and we should be able to see if we have any crazy leaks at this point. So let's see what happens when we turn it over. Nothing so far. Well, I wish I got this on camera. <laughs> I got about, well, actually I didn't forget about, I didn't, I thought that was the, uh, <laughs> or the fuel pump, but no, that's a whole different, whole different thing. So I used the drill, spun up the oil pump, and it shot out over here. Luckily it completely missed this car, but it made a giant mess all over my floor. All right, so we clearly need a fitting in that. All right, let's try this again. There we go. There's some oil pressure. That is pouring out of some of these. Oh, just one. No, <laughs> just one. Is one good enough? heard the term 180 out or newbie mistake? That's what that is. Double checked number one and there we are. We're gonna have to switch that around a little bit. Hey! You're right! 
friends! That's exciting.